Hi, and thank you for joining us here at Living Life. My name is Michael, and it's a joy and a pleasure uh, to bring to you God's Word. I pray that it will comfort you as you discover His truths as being applied into your life. You know, have you ever had a moment where you felt deathly ill? Uh, I remember one of those moments, and it's very vivid in my memory. And this happened when I was in college, and I was living in the dormitory. And as I was living there, I think it was something that I ate, and I had attracted food poisoning. And it was one of the worst experiences of my life, because I couldn't do anything. I was just laying in bed, I had a cold sweat, I was shivering, and even my roommate, I think, was scared to be around me because he thought it would be something contagious. Um, but I just remember just going through that time in my life where I felt alone, where I felt like no one could understand me or comfort me. And it got so bad that in the middle of the night, I had to call home. And I, I remember my mom picking up the phone and she was asking me if everything was okay. And I could barely talk and I just told her that um, I felt really sick and that I could really use her prayers. And so uh, she told me that she would. And later on, uh, the next morning, it just suddenly I felt uh, so much better. And I remember thinking, wow, it's, there's so much power in prayer. And just so much, uh, I hope I'm not looking too much into it, but I'm so glad that I had asked for her prayers. And that really helped me to get through that difficult time. And we see here uh, how prayer uh, helps us and allows us to seek God in the midst of whatever we're going through. Isaiah chapter 38, verses 1 through 8. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and tell Hezekiah, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city. This is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised. I will make the shadow cast by the sun go back the ten steps it has gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. So the sunlight went back the ten steps it had gone down. And so if you've been following along with us and you've come to uh, encounter this man named Hezekiah, who was the king of Israel, and we see that he had become sick, and yet God would show and reveal his mercy to this man. Um, now, we don't get the details on what happens to this king, um, how he contracted the sickness, uh, whether it was something external, uh, if it was on his skin, his face, his body, or if it was something internal, like a cancer or, or something of, of that matter. Um, all we know is that he's dying. And he knows that uh, this is going to uh, cause him to be at the end of his life. And so without knowing all the details, uh, the king is at the near death. And he's at the very end of the stage. And so as he's facing death, all he can do is approach God. And he asks God to help him in, in his efforts. And so Isaiah appears before the king and he tells him the bad news that he will indeed die. Uh, for all the things that he has done, uh, this would be the result, and that he would only have a, a few moments to live uh, his last breath of life. And so what's interesting is that he's given a chance to put things into order in his life. Uh, now, not many people have that opportunity or have that chance, a second chance of 
making sure that um, everything is right and making sure that people are not mad at you or you're not resentful to them or that your bitterness would be let go. And so it seems to happen to people who have the end in mind. And so when you know that there is going to be a certain end, you live very differently. You don't just live as though you're just living day by day, but you're living because you know that it will all end soon. And so that's what happens. You know, if you've ever been around people with terminal illness, uh, they know that they're just a ticking time bomb and that they don't have much time. And so they want to make the most of every opportunity that they have with loved ones or with uh, things in general. And this reminds me of a movie a long time ago, and it's called My Life. And it's about a man, you know, he's happily married, and he finds out that his wife is pregnant with their first child. And as she's going through the pregnancy, he later finds out that he has terminal cancer and that he only has months to live. And so knowing that, he realizes that he wants to do something with his life. And so he goes back and he um, talks to his parents and his family because they had ended on bad terms. And so they were not speaking to each other. Uh, they weren't even acknowledging one another. And so he flies back uh, to see his family, his parents, his relatives, and tries to make uh, amends with what happened. And he even confronts his childhood people that have hurt him. And uh, along the way, uh, he's also keeping in mind that he may not be able to spend much time uh, with his newborn son. And so he starts recording home videos uh, as like a, a video diary, uh, trying to make sure that he's still a part of his son's life. And so he shares with them like how to shave and he tells them like how to play sports or how to fix cars or um, how to act around women. And so he's giving this advice and hoping that he would still be a part uh, of his son's life. And so it's very interesting and it really reminds me and you know people who saw it that this is what we need to have in mind that we don't know how much longer we have to live and then we see uh, Hezekiah's prayer and so he comes before the Lord and he begins by turning his face to the wall and this is significant because uh, this is showing that he is humbling himself before God Almighty and that uh, he's directing his prayers to God and not to any man or someone that can, like a doctor or a physician, um, but rather he knows that he needs to come to God first. And so in his prayer, he asked the Lord to remember all the good works that he had done in the past. And so this is an unusual, this was actually common in those days uh, because they didn't know uh, what would happen later on. And so he comes before God and asks him uh, that to bless him and to give him one more chance. And so in this prayer, uh, we don't know, uh, he doesn't know how God would respond. But for us as Christians, uh, the idea that of us going home to be with the Lord should be something that we welcome. Um, but for Hezekiah, this caused great fear. And it's remarkable that God does answer his prayer. And so this is something that we need to keep in mind as well, that God answers our prayer, uh, maybe in, in ways that we may not even imagine. And so let us learn to seek God and continue to be persistent in prayer, uh, knowing that God listens and that He holds the result of it all. You know, there are times where I've heard people say to me, you know, what's the point of praying when God knows and hears everything? You know, why do we need to come to Him in prayer? Uh, but it's kind of like this. Um, a parent who knows what a child is thinking, and uh, they know the child very well, but it's different when the child approaches the parent and tells them verbally what they want or what they're feeling. And so God the Father feels the same about us as well, that our prayers are never wasted, that every word that we utter 
God hears it and He stores it and He will reveal His plan uh, in His due time. And so let us not give up in prayer, uh, but learn to be persistent knowing that He answers them uh, according to His will. So let's pray and ask that for our lives as well. Uh, God, we just thank you for the humble reminder, um, God, that we are not God and that we need you and we need to come to you and we need to seek you, Father, in every way um, that we approach life. And so may we learn through the actions of Hezekiah that even in his last-ditch effort, that in his prayer, that his sincere efforts and desire um, to live that life for you, and so we just pray that as you've given us this precious gift of life, help us to use it and help us, God, to live it for you and no one else. And in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. This program is produced by the 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. 